in our last class we were discussing with this particular example x equal to y plus z into minus w plus v this example and we have seen up to reduction number 6. Now, what about uh, reduction number 7? So, reduction number 7 is again E producing I d and then the action is uh, this E dot place equal to I d dot place that is V and E dot code is null. Now, coming to this uh, reduction number 8, so E plus E. So, E plus E it says that you should uh, get a new temporary variable first. So, this E dot place equal to T 3 that is a new temporary and then E dot code it will have E 1 dot code e2 dot code and then this uh, generation of a new code that t3 equal to something. So, uh, t1 equal to so t2 equal to uh, unary minus w so that is e1 dot code. So, this one you this is our e1 so that is e1 dot code. Then for uh, for this thing uh, for e2 dot code it was null. So, there is nothing then it generates this particular line that new e dot place that is t3 equal to this uh, e 1 dot place that is t 2 plus e 2 dot place that is v. So, that way this particular line uh, this code is generated. So, now I have got a code that t 2 equal to u nani minus w. So, the situation I have got is t 1 equal to y plus z. So, that is there and t 2 equal to u nani minus w and then t 3 equal to t 2 plus v. So, that much has been done. Now, we come to reduction number 9. So, reduction number 9 is nothing but within bracket E. So, this uh, so nothing is generated. So, this place we remember uh, it as T 3 only. Okay. So, uh, so, this place is T 3. So, you can write down the corresponding places. So, this is uh, um, this place is Y, this place is uh, Z, this place is uh, W, this place is V this is also this is uh, now this uh, e plus e so reduction number 3 so it was generating a new temporary so this place is uh, t1 then um, this place is t2 so this minus of e so this place is t2 so this is within bracket so that is equal to t2 now so this is this place is t3 and then when i am doing this uh, um, uh, so this place is also T 1. Okay. Now, it will be doing T 2 into T 3. So, T 1 into T 3 that has to be done. So, then that line number 10 it, get, it has got E dot place equal to T 4 line number uh, reduction number 10. So, reduction number 10 is this one. So, E plus E. So, that way it will get a new temporary variable. So, that is our T 4 and then code that is generated is E 1's code e 2's code followed by this code for this multiplication. So, e 1's code is t 1 equal to y plus z, e 2's code is t equal to u nari minus w and then uh, t 3 this uh, uh, this extra code that is generated. So, this line is also there. So, the, this is the code of e 1. So, the up to this much is the code of e 2. up to this much is the code of uh, E 2 and then this is the extra thing that is added for doing the multiplication that T 4 equal to T 1 into T 3. And finally, this S dot code it says that you have to have uh, this first uh, this E 1 dot uh, so this E dot code. So, E dot code is this whole thing. Okay. So, up to this much is E dot code as it is pointed out here. So, it will be e dot code and then it will have this i d dot place assigned as e dot place. So, i d dot place is x okay? and then this uh, e dot place is t 4. So, the, the, so, this line number reduction number 10 has got e dot place in t 4. So, this x assigned as t 4. So, ultimately we have got this as the final piece of code. So, s dot code points out to this. So, in this style, so you can generate uh, code for this arithmetic expressions, but the only problem is that we are, uh, we are uh, keeping the code as a pointer. So, that uh, for every non-terminal that I have in my reduction tree, so there is a pointer to a corresponding code 
and so there may be the same code repeated at several places like see this particular line uh, say uh, this uh, t2 equal to unary minus w. So, we are writing it here as well as here. So, all these places this particular line is going to be repeated. So, the type of uh, code generation function that we have used is that gen. So, that gen function has got this uh, issue that is it will generate the code and while generating code so it will try to concatenate and all these things. So, a better strategy may, may be that we just uh, write the code onto a file as and when it is generated. Okay. So, uh, as and when a line is generated by this uh, the, the in this syntax directed translation mechanism, so that is immediately written onto the file. And then, uh, so that has got some difficulty also because you need to rectify some part of the code later because many a time what happens is that the jump targets are not known. So, we cannot uh, fill up those uh, issue those points previously, but uh, if we have got uh, this uh, this type of organization where we have got this gen based code. So, that the code entire code is available as pointer uh, to uh, this individual non terminal. So, in that case uh, that correction may be easy, but uh, in case of while while you are writing to file that correction may be slightly difficult. So, we will see how are you going to do all these things. Now, so this is uh, Next, we look into uh, the code generation for arrays like array this is a special thing because array is a special uh, data structure that we have and almost all the programming languages they will have an array the type of structure in them. So, generating code for array is uh, very important. So, let us consider an array element ai and we will try to see how this ai will be uh, translated into this three address code. So, if we assume that the lowest and highest indices of A are low and high. So, in so in general, so this array when you are declaring, so in say the for, for example, in language C, we are writing A 100 with the implicit assumption that the index will run from 0 to 99. So, this 0 is the low index and 99 is the high index. But it, it need not be so like if you look into different programming languages you will find different uh, um, uh, standards like somebody may think that okay, this uh, array this 100 in that case low is equal to 1 and high is equal to 100. Somebody may say that I can I should be able to define some array and I should be able to tell its index range very specifically. For, ex uh, for example, somebody may say it is minus 10 to plus 10. So, the array indices are a of minus 10, a of minus 9, in this way it goes up to a of 0 and then a of 1 going up to a of 10. So, that can happen. So, the, so all these styles are available. So, to make it very generic what has been done is that we assume that there are low and high uh, indices are available that will tell us what is the lowest and what is the highest possible index for the array. And then the width of each element is w and the start the array starts at the base address a. Now, because when this array will be loaded into the main memory as part of the program, then array uh, may not be starting at address 0. So, depending on that, so there, be, there will be a base address, but that base address is known when the program is going into execution because at that time uh, I have got uh, I have got the uh, all the, the the array has already been loaded into memory, so its start address is known. So where where will this element AI will start? Okay, so this will be starting at. So let us take an example. Suppose I am defining an integer a 100 as the array and uh, we are assuming that the indices they are running from 1 to uh, 100. Okay. So, this is not a C style of declaration. So, it is a hypothetical language where so e, int a 100 if you give. So, the indices will run from 1 to 100 and if we say that the size of every element uh, in this array is say 4 bytes. That means, in the array organization uh, the locations uh, so 1, 2, 
3 and 4, so they are reserved for A1. Similarly, 5 from 5 onwards A2 will start 5, 6, 7 and 8. 5, 6, 7 and 8 they will have the element A2. They will have the element A2. So, it will go like this. Now, uh, how to get a corresponding address for i? So, the address for i is given by this base plus i minus low into w. So, because this base starts at some point, suppose it starts at address 1000. So, if I give i equal to say uh, i equal to say 1, then what happens? So, 100,000 plus i minus low. So, low is also equal to 1. So, this is 0 into size of each integer is 4. So, that is equal to 1000. And you see that indeed the index 1 starts at location 1000. So, if we uh, try out some other value of i, say say i equal to say 3, then it is 1000 plus 3 minus 1 into 4. So, that is 1000 plus uh, 8. So, 1008. So, you see that uh, from 1008 uh, only, so 1, 2, 3, 4 is uh, 1234 so is uh, the first element, then uh, so then this uh, 5678, so they are the second element. So, but uh, third element starts at uh, 1008. So, 1008 if it is, uh, so that is uh, going to be. Uh, in fact, uh, here it is assumed that this i minus low, so this low starts at 0. So, that is why it is the, the my array index starts with 0. So, that is why it is uh, happening like this. So, if it is some other value, so the, so I have to do a plus 1 here to come to the correct one. Okay. So, so this uh, i minus low, so that is 3 plus uh, 1, uh, 3 minus 1, 2 plus 3. So, that is uh, equal to 3. So, 3 into 4, so it is starting at location 12. So, this is uh, this is the uh, element, uh, this is the third element. So, this is the element uh, A0, then I have got A1 here, then from 8, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, I will have A2. So, A0 uh, holds the addresses 0 to 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, then A 1, it will occupy the addresses from 4 to 4, 5, 6, 7 and then A 2 will occupy the address 8, 9, 10, 11 and then A 3 will occupy the address from uh, this uh, 12, 12 to 15. So, in this particular case, it is assumed that the array index starts with 0. So, if you take that the array index starts with 1, then you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, add one uh, add another one here okay in this expression then it will be correct so so first part of the expression okay, so so it can be rewritten like this base plus i minus low into w so if you just uh, recompute uh, this expression then what happens is that this base minus low into w, so that you can club in one uh, in in one group, and this i into w in the other group. So this uh, i minus so, so first part, so base minus low into w, so this part is constant, because uh, uh, so base is known and low w all those values are known. So base minus low into w, so that becomes a constant part, and that i into w is the variable part. So that is that will be called the offset part. So, this first part, so this is pre-computed and it is uh, stored, it is remembered with the array. So, whenever this array is defined, so you see you can compute this base, low, w, all these fields are known. So, you can immediately compute this constant part and store it as a, uh, as a component in the symbol table. So, that later on when this array is referred to, so from the symbol table you can just retrieve that uh, uh, this part, the value of this base minus low into w. 
so that way you get the base address and then this i into w so that you can compute getting the value of i so that way uh, it can be done so first part of the expression can be pre computed into a constant and added to the offset i into w so if that is so then how can we do this translation like so two dimensional array so two dimensional array so it has got uh, array with row major storage so as you know the two dimensional array so there may be um, row major storage or column major storage so in a row major storage so we store the elements row by row so if uh, say this is a two dash two dimensional array okay where there are these individual rows and columns are running okay so these are the rows and these are the columns now so in a row major organization means that ultimately memory is going to be single dimensional so it is not multi dimensional so this first element so we can store in this order so you can start or store it like, like a11 then a12 then a one n then a two one a two two so like that so that is what i am doing is i am storing the elements in this order first this then this then this like this so i am doing it like this so you can so that is that organization is called row major organization i can also store it in a column wise fashion like first i store a one one then i store a two one so a m one then i store a one two so that way also i can do so if i do that so that will give us a column major organization so the, so here the formula for calculating this a i one i two in a row major organization is given by base plus i i one minus low one into n two plus i two into low two into w so this is uh, this you can also verify from any book on data structures now uh, after simplification so we may like to take the constant parts together so that they can be pre computed and stored uh, with the symbol table and this dynamic part may be computed separately so this base minus low 1 into n2 plus low 2 uh, whole thing multiplied by w so this whole thing is the constant part okay so this is the constant part for the array and then uh, this part is the variable part okay this part is the offset part so where this n2 is the size of the second dimension and so this so you can go for higher dimensions also like you, you can use accordingly this formula will have one more stage so the again you will get a constant part and an offset part for this uh, code uh, for this uh, array a, a uh, array element access now how to generate the actual code so that we'll uh, try to see in the successive slides so what is the grammar so that is the first thing so our grammar is uh, like this so it is slightly twisted to make this code generation process simpler so we do it like this that s producing l assigned as e where e can produce e plus e within bracket e or l and this l can be e list bracket close id where e list can be e list comma e or id within bracket e so you see that a very simple type of assignment array assignment may be like this x equal to a say x equal to a sorry to follow this particular format say one uh, say a 10 very simple one dimensional array access x equal to a 10 now when i am doing this so what is done so it is uh, broken up into a uh, statement like this this s this is an assignment statement so that this is the assignment l assigned as e and then this l so on the left hand side i don't have any array and to uh, come to that part i have to use this rule l producing id so l producing id which is x now for the e part so i have got an array okay so that uh, to come to array i have to come to l actually from l i can go to this e list etc so i have to come to l 
and from this L I have to generate this A 10 this axis. So, I will do it like this I will make it like E list and bracket close and then E list. So, since it, the, for the first part of this uh, right hand side, so that is for multi dimensional array. Okay. So, th there is a comma here. So, if there is multi dimensional array, so it will be used. So, in our case, in this particular case, I have got a single dimensional array. Okay. So, I, I will follow this particular structure. So, I will be doing like id open, uh, open square bracket and e. This id is a. Now, this E uh, is an expression. So, expression uh, can give me uh, say uh, number or id. So, this is a number and the number is 10. So, here I have not written explicitly the rule uh, for uh, the, that this uh, uh, that this one can be this E producing number can be a separately one. Or uh, this, uh, so I have not written it explicitly. Okay, let uh, if I if I want to do it uh, in a proper fashion as per this grammar, then I have to do it like this: this e producing l, l producing id, and id is nothing but this uh, ten. To do it like this. Okay, so this grammar is uh, slightly twisted. Otherwise, I should have like this uh, array name should be. Uh, so this expression should be another 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 rule should be id within bracket e some e list should be something like this, but for the sake of code generation. So, it has been twisted a bit. Okay. Now, uh, this particular grammar for the different non terminals we assume the presence of different attributes. Now, the first attribute the l dot place. Okay. So, l dot place uh, it holds the name of the variable may be an array name also okay, for this uh, uh, for the i uh, for the uh, for holding the uh, play name of the variable so this is l dot place will hold the name of the variable corresponding to l and l dot offset so l dot offset identifies whether this is an array axis or a variable axis so if it is a simple variable then l dot offset is null and if it is a uh, array axis then this l dot offset will hold the offset of the element for the array so, previously we have seen that uh, there can be this uh, e dot uh, w. So, uh, we have seen pre previously that this type of offsets can be calculated. Okay. So, those offsets are calculated in uh, this uh, those offsets will be calculated and that will come to this l dot offset. Then e dot place. So, this will hold the name of the variable holding the value of expression e. So, that is e dot place. Now, e list dot array. So, yes, so that is so, so, so these are about the attributes for L and E for the e list non terminal. So, we will have a number of uh, attributes. So, e list dot array it holds the name of the array that we are referring to. Then, e list dot place it holds the name of the variable that holds the value for the index expression. So, if it is a multi dimensional array, then this uh, I will get a complex expression. If it is a single dimensional array, then uh, will this expression will be simple. So, corresponding to the index, whatever expression comes, so that will be kept in e list dot place. And e list dot dim, so this holds the current dimension under consideration for the array. Because for each dimension, the, um, uh, the maximum uh, size is uh, different. So, like if I have got an array, uh, say, a, if I have got an array A uh, say 110. So, for the first dimension it is uh, the uh, dimension is 100. So, for the second one it is 10. So, this, so that way this e list dot dimension. So, it will hold the current dimension under consideration. So, when we are doing something like it may be um, uh, so I am uh, doing it like this. So, this is say x plus y comma z into w. So, this may be the array element that I am trying to access. So, this x plus y. So, this is uh, um, uh, for the first dimension. So, this is uh, so this x plus y uh, 1. So, it corresponds to the uh, first dimension and this z into w. So, this corresponds to the second dimension. So, uh, we will see this array translation scheme. So, it will be uh, using these attributes very cleverly. 
to generate the corresponding code. Let us see what are we going to do. So, initially uh, I will uh, look into this assignment statement which is L assigned as E. So, uh, this L assigned as E. So, if L dot offset is null, if L dot offset is null, then I know that uh, I do not have got, uh, uh, so there is no array reference here. So, I have to generate a code which was previously uh, the simple assignment statement where it was S producing ID assigned as E. So, this was the situation and there we said that the code that is generated is id dot place equal to e dot place. So, this was the code that is generated. So, here also it is uh, similar to that. So, only thing is that if this l dot offset is null that means it is a simple identifier like this. So, in that case I can generate this code that l dot place assigned as e dot place. Otherwise, this is an array access, but by this time this l dot place holds the name of the array and this l dot offset. So, this holds the temporary into which the index expression has been calculated. So, you can just uh, we can just look into the previous slide. So, this l dot offset uh, is offset of the element for the array. So, uh, so, this, so, l dot place. So, this is the um, uh, this is the uh, holds the name of the variable and this l dot offset is the uh, that contains the offset of the uh, offset of the element for the array. So, this will be uh, done. So, this l dot offset has got the offset part calculated into a temporary. So, that temporary variable will be used as the index and that will be assigned the value of e dot place. So, e dot place already have the temporary that has that uh, that has got the value of e that will be done. So, this is uh, the, so this is the new rule that we have and that is uh, taken care of in this fashion. Then this rule is uh, the old one. So, e 1 plus e 2. So, as we know that here I have to get a new temporary variable for this uh, e. So, we get a new temp here and then we emit this particular co code that is e dot place equal to e 1 dot place plus e 2 dot place. So, they are added and so e 1 dot place and e 2 dot place they are in some temporaries. So, they will be, uh, so, the, uh, so the code says that those values are to be added and that code should be, uh, so this e dot place uh, should be assigned to that particular temporary. Similarly, e producing within bracket e 1, so this e dot place uh, should be equal to e 1 dot place. So, there is no change at this point. So, this way for this uh, simple uh, rules, so uh, we can do this uh, assignment. For more complex ones, so, the situation will be a bit differ different like say this one, say this E producing L. Now, again the same thing that is this expression that I am talking about. So, this is an expression now this L it may be a simple variable or it may be an array expression. So, uh, so what is done is that if it is a if it is a simple variable then this L dot offset will be equal to null. In that case E dot place equal to L dot place. Otherwise, this uh, e, I, I, so the, I have to get a new temporary variable for e dot place. So, that is obtained by this new temp and then it generates this piece of code that e dot place assigned as l dot place, then this square bracket, l dot offset, then this bracket close. So, this extra code will be generated. Okay. So, uh, that way it will be, uh, uh, it will be generating the code for this. Uh, E, e producing L. So, this uh, the now at the end of this, so this E will have this uh, place attribute, so E dot place which will be holding the, uh, which will be holding the value of this uh, computed, uh, computed expression of L and this uh, L, uh, so and uh, it will, it will be, uh, it will also have a piece of a line of code in the code that is generated that E dot place is assigned as the array, array element access. So, we will continue with this in the next class for this array access.